So, <laughs> for the last time, I'm going to talk about Kiddy Connect. And the first thing I want to say is, uh, bear with me when, through all, all this conversation, Kiddy does not stand It has not been like that for years. So when you read Kiddy, <laughs> you have to think that it's a community. It's the people laughing at me right now, and it's the people that will comment this in a year and will laugh at me in a year because of this. So it's a community, and yeah, so. Yeah, Kiddy stands for community. We do documentation, we do translations, yeah, we don't only do software. So, uh, yeah, that's my face a few years ago. My name is Alex Fiestas, I work on all things KD, I'm sponsored by Blue Systems to do so. And yeah, I work all those things. Yeah, there are a few missing, but especially if you work on any of those things in GNOME or in any other desktop, Ping me and let's talk about it. I'm sure we, there are things we can share, things we can improve. So yeah, let's use Fosdem for more than just this talk. What I don't do is Kiddy Connect, actually. <laughs> I haven't written any line of code into that project. What I have done is mentor a Google Summer of Code that had this idea with a friend called Rafael a few years ago. I don't have any time to work on it. So I thought, yeah, let's do Google Summer of Code. And this guy appeared, and yeah, he was a colleague of mine. He wrote an awesome proposal for the Google Summer of Code, an awesome proposal, and just awesome bugs. He wanted to do it, and so he did. He's an awesome guy, awesome hacker. We worked together. If you have any technical questions, go to ask him, because I don't have any idea. Uh, we worked for three months on this. He came to the office, really nice guy. He's looking for a job. He's looking for a job outside Spain, Barcelona. So yeah, hire him. What is Kiddy Connect uh, or what it does? The idea is to fuse your devices as much as possible, as much as you might desire. The idea is we have many devices. They all of them do different things. But still, when you want to send much from your computer to your phone, you send yourself an email. That doesn't make sense. Devices are going to move. We all have a phone, a tablet, laptop. But in a month, your dog will have a chip to tell you if he's hungry or not. And this thing is going to get worse and worse. So our idea is to fuse them as much as possible. So there is no, the, we want to remove the physical barrier between your phone and your tablet, or your, ta or your phone and your laptop, or your phone and your fridge. What it is, it is a protocol. We, of course, develop software for it, but it is a protocol. It's a simple protocol, and yeah, it's just that, a protocol. A protocol which is JSON. People were writing about XML. All the alternatives to KD Connect protocol are XML based. So we had three months of Google Summer of Code to develop this, and we were like, yeah, we ain't touching that shit. XML is, was awesome in the 80s, maybe in 2000, not anymore. We wanted something simple. We picked JSON, well established. We have awesome libraries to deal with JSON, even in C. So yeah. It's medium abstracted. Uh, right now, we have specialized, well, we have code for local area networks, and we try to focus on houses and offices, not in FOSM, which uh, makes us use things like broadcast and multicast. In the FOSM Wi-Fi, those are not allowed, and they don't relate these things, so we don't work here. But we are abstracted, right? So we can run another uh, backend that specializes on these kinds of Wi-Fi's or networks like universities and the like. On um, you can also write a backend for USB or Bluetooth or I don't know pigeon pigeon IP base, whatever. <laughs> it can be it can be easily extended. Uh, you have to think about this protocol like the HTTP header in case you have 
you are you are familiar with that. We are just the header. We say send it to this device with this encryption and kind of a subject, and then you can attach a body and you can attach whatever you want. We do. We even attach some binary data for sending things like avatars and small images. So yeah, it can be easily extended. And again, it's extremely easy to implement. Yuis, uh, which is here, he implemented a PHP, I think, or Node, or Node, days, and yeah, he did it in 15 minutes while we were talking. So yeah, it's extremely, extremely, extremely easy to implement. Which is the point, right? We want this thing everywhere. If we do something XML-based, nobody's going to <laughs> implement it. So what kind of cool things we do? We started by wanting to fuse Android and KDE. Well, we scratch our own inch. So we both, Albert and I, use Plasma slash KDE. We both, Albert and I, uh, has a, have an Android device. So let's fuse these things. One of the first, we have two different notifications integration. And we do this. As I said, we want to fuse the thing. So a notification for when somebody's calling you is not enough. Because when somebody's calling you, most of the times, you want to pick up the phone. So but we do things like, if you're watching a video on VLC or listening to music in Amarok, and you are you know, concentrated writing some code with your music extremely loud, we will pause your show a notification saying, yeah, this friend is calling you. We also look for the name in the agenda and all that. And we even can send the avatar, which in this case I did not have. But yeah. Um, yeah, we stop the players and we stop all M priest two players. So VLC, Amarok, Clementine, yeah, mostly everything. And yeah, and also we do, I lack a screenshot for that. We also do synchronized notifications. So again, this is the concept of fusing it, not just, you know, uh, any notification that is in your Android device will appear. Actually, I think I have a screenshot. Okay, I may not. Uh, will appear, and then the moment you read it in your Plasma desktop, you close it, it will be closed in the phone, and the other way around. You don't want to see the same notification twice. Next feature is battery reporting. We do it in a nice way, so we don't use all your phone battery by asking how much battery left you have. Uh, yeah, and it's when you have like 30% left in the phone, which is kind of nice. I mean, I'm sure it happened to all you. Like we have smartphones that have like 10 hours battery, if you're lucky. Um, yeah, it's extremely useful because sometimes you forget to plug the thing. And now it will send you a notification saying, hey, I have 30% of my battery left. All the amount. We do remote control. Uh, well, kind of obvious. If you want to control any Empress 2 from your phone, just, well, they appeared and you can forward see all those things. We integrate with Android Send. Uh, for those who doesn't use Android, in Android, wherever you have a file or a URL or something and you want to share it, you get a menu with a few options. Usually, well, Google Plus, of course. All those things. Uh, now Kiddy Connect will appear there. So if you want to share, I'm just going to ignore this. If you want to share a URL, you do it from your phone. And this happens a lot, for example, when, well, I'm forced to use WhatsApp for be able to integrate in society. And people send URLs in WhatsApp, like, oh, look, this awesome article about something. I'm using my laptop to read that awesome article in WhatsApp. That doesn't make sense. So I just send the URL. Then the Plasma integration we have will open your, your browser with a URL. And yeah, with files, we just send the file and yeah. We do synchronize. Yeah, it's virtually the same clipboard. We, at the, at the point where we're testing this, we had the whole office clipboard 
change, like one after the other. It was kind of fun because we did not know, and like the next day we forgot about that, and it was kind of fun because the contents were yeah nothing embarrass embarrassing happened, luckily enough. Uh, yeah, so again, especially I use this a lot with WhatsApp. I hate that thing. Something in WhatsApp, they forget the HTTP because, I don't know, I think Chrome doesn't even copy it these days. And WhatsApp doesn't recognize that as a URL. And yeah, what's this awesome YouTube videos? <laughs> I don't want to use my phone. I, I have my workstation. I want to use it in my 4K display or whatever. So you just copy in the phone and it automatically gets transferred to, the, to your clipboard. And then also, if you are Plasma users, we have this thing called Clipper. It has a history, uh, a history of clipboards. <sighs> awesome. I've used that many times. I use that, like, I use Clipper. I go to my phone, I copy something, I copy another so something else. Then I switch application, go to Clipper, and I have both things there. It's, yeah, it's extremely useful. All of this is encrypted. Uh, the first thing you do with your devices is, is pair them. Interface-wise, avoid this. Implementation-wise, is optional. But right now, all plugins use it. Use it. Uh, we are not experts in security, or Albert. So we have been told that it's okay. It's simple enough and. Yeah, like the security is fair, right? Which is a way of saying you should improve it. <laughs> so please, if somebody wants to help us and tell us what to do, what to use, well, patches welcome. Patches and, and advice as well. <laughs> so what do we have? What we have is and a few months after that, like until now, we have a protocol, we have a queue and implements a few plugins. For example, for discover other devices, we have Avahi, which uses ZeroConf, and we have our own implementation. We have to do our own implementation because conf implementation, as horrible as it would restart the device from time to time. And yes, we, we simply couldn't deal with this, so just create our own thing. And it does the parsing of the JSON. We have this concept of messages, and you know, instead of having to parse the JSON yourself, we have if you are yes, API. We have a server uh, that is mostly a thin layer on top of the library, and it integrates with Plasma. So yeah, I don't know, simple stuff. And well, with this server, if you want other devices to discover you and all these things, you have to have it running, right? Yeah, we have plugins for many things. We have, well, all the and a few more I forgot, I guess. The Kiddy Plasma integration. Again, we use Plasma, so we decided to integrate with it. This is how it looks right now. We use Qt. Then we have libconnect, which is not called that way, but we will rename it. We have the server. The server has plugins for each of the features I showed before. And then we have Divas, and then the Kiddy integration in there. So it's, that's important because you can grab Kiddy Connect, run it in your in your Qt-based desktop, and then you just connect to the Divas interfaces and write your uh, graphic user interface as well, like you like. This is how we want it to look, maybe, in the future. So we want everything to be Divas abstracted. If you are familiar with the telepathy project, we want to do something like that. Because right now, the plugins in this model, the plugins are binary plugins. So you have to write them in C++ or create bindings for languages. And we don't have to. And maintaining bindings is hell. So yeah. In this case, if everything were to use Divas, then you can just use any language that uses Divas and hook to it. So, yeah, we will probably switch to this, but it's low priority. Now we want to polish a few more things. And, yeah, this is what's next. Better encryption. I hope that somebody from this room will provide. We want to be able to share folders using SFTP. 
well, we don't want to reinvent the, the wheel. SFTP works, it's there. So there is already, this is working. There is an S SFTP implementation in Java that we are using Giddy Connect. So it basically exports the file system of your Android device and you can connect to it, browse it, and well, it works as good as any SFTP. Input sharing, uh, there is a branch for this as well and a guy working on it. Basically, the best well, example is you are in your couch, your tablet is hooked into the TV because you want to watch some TV show or something, and you want to pause it instead of waking up. You can just go to your phone and, and well, for pausing, you have the control, I guess. But yeah, you will have a virtual mouse and keyboard in your phone or tablet or whatever. We want cloud. We don't want evil cloud. We want nice cloud. So the idea, is we, we will have two things. First is be able to discover devices through the cloud. The idea is, uh, is FOSDEM is a perfect example. In FOSDEM, we have a local area network that works really well, but the devices are not able to, to see each other. So we will do the discoverability with a server in the middle. So both devices will send the IP and say, hey, I'm on this IP in this port. Can you talk to me? And if they can talk, then they continue the conversation using the 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 local network. If they cannot see each other, then yeah, we will write some server code and all messages will be sent through that server. This is not done yet, is what you use and the Node.js thingy I talked before, but it should be fairly easy and nice and I hope you will finish it. Platform, things as making it Divas based, as I said before, Things as stripping some KD dependencies we don't need. Things as porting to Qt5. And then with frameworks, things will improve a lot. We are mostly using Qt only. We, we use kconfig, for example, which will be tr one in frameworks. So it's, it's virtually not a huge dependency. The implementation of the protocol. Right now, we are using it only like with this implementation. <laughs> Who cares, right? Would be nice to have some other implementation and play with it. I think I have time. Well, if you send it to Albert, I did not. Yeah, it's what we use split, right now. We can split some layers off, uh, which might help the Egyptian layer. Uh, uh, the layer of, of uh, injected by uh, some certificates, uh, depending, on, depending on what kind of device the video is. So for the sake of the video and microphone working, uh, the intervention was about uh, libssh, that we could use it for encryption, that, yeah, it's awesome and fast and light. So, yeah, I think it's what we are already using. So the, the problem we have, uh, people told to us, is how we exchange keys and the uh, uh, cryptographic algorithms we were using were not the best and things like that. But, yeah.
Okay, any questions? Doesn't look like it, so. Well, that's the thing we have to to research. The point of this project, and still the point of this project, is to do something that works, and we have it working. We use it every day. It's extremely awesome, and it's f well fairly secure. Uh, so we want to continue this path. This is something I want to see all Plasma users uh, using, and I want to see distribution installers to say, "Hey, I detected that you have a phone with Connect. Do you want to pair it now and synchronize everything?" Yes. Uh, what, what kind of level of what do you expect? Well, we need the best and we need sync <laughs> 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 I and mean, we need it two ways two ways, right? Encrypt and decrypt. Yeah. So <laughs> So, no questions. <laughs> we we talk we talk uh like all that diagram I show that knows how to talk programs like this. So the thing we have right now enabled to synchronize clipboard for example to two plasma desktops. So it's not like we only have desktop two hundred. It could be Android two hundred that also works. And yeah. So we have a Java implementation for Android, we have Qt, we don't have anything else. Yeah, if somebody else wants to port it, awesome. Wait, uh, somebody over there, Hat? Okay, so yeah, uh, there is a guy that have contacted me for Google Summer of Code on iOS integration. The problem with that is, well, it's Google Summer of Code, right? So <laughs> let's see what happens. And um, yeah, I don't think even the guy has an iOS device. So. No, no, no. Uh, this is only for the Qt and for the desktop, since we are in the cross desktop room, I focus on that. But no, no, the Android one is uh, implemented purely in. The question was if the Android <laughs> application uses Qt and Divas and all that. Nope. The Android is developed, the Android part is developed in Java and it's fully uh, Android native using all the Android shiny things. So, yeah. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you.